Training camp less than two weeks away. What should we expect? We talked to Bradford Banta about it. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is a Wednesday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day on a Wednesday, July 10th and a Thursday, July 11th. Thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. A shout out to our everydayers who are out there, whether you're watching on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel or listening wherever you get your podcasts. We appreciate you, Locked On Lions, today. Brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Terms apply. Bradford Banta with us today, the former Lions player, assistant coach, of course, also was the assistant special teams coach for years at Michigan as well. Still lives in the area. We love checking in with Brad from time to time on the show. We're two weeks away, Double B, from uh, training camp starting. Can you believe this? How about them apples? It's about time we get going. I can't wait. I'm excited for it. Now, you weren't always like that when you were a player, right? Were you like <laughs> on July 10th, 10, 15 years ago when you were playing like, oh gosh, can we push this thing out or what? <laughs> well, back in the day, we started camp a little bit earlier. You know, I think we were talking about yesterday. Uh, I can remember sitting on a boat in a lake, not sure where I was. It may have been in Indianapolis. I, yeah, it was in Indianapolis whenever I was playing. Uh, July 4th, sitting on a boat thinking, do I want a beer or do I not? (laughs) Because we're, believe it or not, we reported to training camp about three or four days later. So, and that's, that's that's early that, yeah, that's just the way it was. Yeah. And you know, so, but you know, times have changed. Collective bargaining agreements have changed. And, uh, now they report two weeks before the first game and, and we're just about at that time. Yeah, it's crazy. So the Lions will report, the veterans will report on the 23rd. So the first practice will be the 24th. Um, I want to get into all of that uh, uh, with you, certainly. Real fast on, on, on this Jared Goff thing. So today, I don't know if you heard this, uh, yeah. Jeff Schwartz, who, of course, played in the off- uh, offensive line in the NFL for years. He's on the Minus 3 podcast with my guy Dave Damashek. And they were talking about the Lions, and it was very complimentary and all this stuff. And then Schwartz says, well, you know, he says, you're not winning a Super Bowl with Jared Goff. What do you think of that comment? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they Jared Goff has been to a Super Bowl? Yes. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, it is a – there are 11 other people out on the field, Correct. Well, now, 10 other, 10 others. Well, 10 other, yeah, 10 <laughs> other. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, uh, no, it, it's it's a team effort. And that is way out of left field because right now, the way golf is playing, the offense that he's involved in, I believe that there is a very good chance that Detroit has a not only going to the Super Bowl, but possibly winning the Super Bowl. Uh, that I don't find that comment by me too far fetched. Now, what were his reasons for saying that? He just, it, you know, as a back and forth, it was quick, and he just said, "The one thing I'm not buying is, is is golf." And he said, "I like him. He's fine. He's done a good job, you know, in the system, and uh, he's taking the next step." But uh, he said, "I just don't think you're winning a Super Bowl with him." And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Nick Folk? win a Super Bowl, not Nick Folk, uh, uh, Nick, why am I drawing a blank on uh, our guy from the Eagles? Nick, uh, Nick Foles. Yeah. Nick Foles. Nick Foles won a Super Bowl pretty recently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With the other 53 man roster that you have right. out there, it's a team concept and, and the way that they're putting this team together, it just seems like everything's gelling the mixture that they have guys coming back, the vets that they're going to have, and then throwing in the new players that they have that they've added via free agency and via the draft. Will there always be this kind of, I'm not saying there's a ton of negativity on Jared Goff, but you know, I guess he's got to win it all to just shut up all the doubters, right? Because there's still some out there that surprises me. I, yes. I mean, but, you can also say that 
for 99.5% of all players that have ever played this game. Because if you, if you, if you look at the past history, how many players out of how many players that have played in the league actually have a ring? I don't. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So the same thing could have been said about me. You know, <laughs> they're not going to win a Super Bowl without me. Yeah, you're proven right because I'm too old to play now. So, <laughs> but eh, I, I don't know. It's all I mean, on Brad. It's that, Brad. That's it's a like... broad brush statement. To make. It's almost like the Barry Sanders argument. When I, I remember when I moved here in 96, there were a couple of Lion fans that would tell me they're never winning with him. And I said, wait till he's gone. How much worse yeah. off will they be? He's not a winning player. And I'm like, what? He, he, it's running behind a mediocre, at this point, I'm talking 97, 98. I mean, mediocre offensive line. You know, Glover was, or, uh, you know, the two guys got hurt and, and, and Lomas left. And it's like, what are you talking about? Uh, that's, you know, Cal, oh, Cal, I guess they couldn't have won with Calvin, but it wasn't Calvin's fault, right? He only set league records. <laughs> I mean, he, the guy did whatever he could do to help win the game. Yeah. You know, it, it, I mean, and yeah, you know, Jared does touch the leather every time he sets foot out on the field. And, you know, it is a concentration point of the team for every team. Uh, but if you surround that player with a good cast, which Super Bowl winning teams have done or continue to do, then there's no telling where this team can go. It's crazy. Um, I think it was Rex Grossman was the quarterback of the Bears in the rain in Miami. True. The Colts. That was a one score game in the fourth quarter. Yes, yeah. Peyton Manning and the Colts won the Super Bowl, and it was great for for city that you were in for a little while and they're there in Indianapolis, but my gosh, it's like Rex Grossman was in a one score game. Trent Dilfer won a super bowl, uh, with yes. the Ravens. So did Joe Flacco. Right. So it's pretty wild. Um, all right. Take me through training camp. Now, like you said, what are the players thinking with two weeks to go here? What are they doing right now? You know, I, I, I would say you were working out at your own pace. At this point, whenever you break from OTAs, mandatory minicamp from mid June until the end of July, uh, they'll take a little bit of time off because they just went through OTAs and then mandatory mini minicamp. They just went through that. They'll go home, uh, visit with family. Uh, I guarantee you, uh, let's see, I am guilty of this, but. Some guys get married. And if you look at guys that get married that are playing in the league, I guarantee you their anniversaries will fall between June 23rd through <laughs> July 10th yeah. Yeah. In, that, in that window period right there. Uh, it, it, you know, or they're visiting family. And then, but at the same time while they're visiting, they'll go find a place to work out. Or they will go visit their quarterback and go through workouts with that quarterback, but at a more relaxed pace, just to make sure that they're on the same page with all their teammates heading into training camp. Because, you know, they have what tight end you that goes on yep. at this time, yep. uh, D line you that goes on at this time. Those are the only two that I think groups that publicly acknowledge that they get together. Right. Am I correct? Right. I think you that. are. Yeah, I think you are. Yeah. So guys continue to sharpen their skills, but just at a more relaxed pace. And then, then you start ramping up for training camp and then you, you, you start to taper a little bit, uh, towards, I mean, as training camp nears and then once training camp hits, you're, I mean, it's an overdrive and you're going all the way until the end of February. Bradford Banta with us, the former uh, Lions long snapper, tight end, of course, uh, many years in the NFL and as an assistant coach uh, as well. He's working out some uh, young kids right now and still uh, coaching. We love uh, hearing that from uh, Bradford. We're going to talk to him again uh, coming up next. I want to ask him about uh, some stories and, and players showing up maybe out of shape. I want to get into the Lions roster a little bit, what he's looking forward to, forward to in terms of competition. We'll do that coming up next. 
And Matt Derry here to tell you about our friends at Game Time. I mentioned before, if you're looking for MLB tickets, I don't know if they're going to play tonight down at Comerica Park, Tigers and Guardians, but Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. I was there last night for Tigers Guardians. I was there Monday night. See my boys lose one nothing, but I got my Monday tickets on Game Time, and it's so easy, hassle free. And fantastic. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and a lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. The view from your seat in any venue is the best because you can scroll left, scroll, scroll right, and you can see everything right there on the game time app and get a real feel for where you are sitting. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets and Tigers tickets with game time. Download the game time app. Create an account. Use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Folks, there are tickets for $3 right now in game time for tonight. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download game time today. Last-minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Our man Bradford Banta with us. You saw him during a football season on Fox 2 uh, as well uh, with uh, Dan Miller on Sunday Night Roundtable a few times. Former Lions tied in a long snapper with us here on Lockdown Lions today. All right, Bradford, there's got to be some stories. We, we talked about it before. Guys getting ready. And the Lions are serious this year. I mean, not that they're not serious every year, but this year, very serious. Were there guys you remember walking into that locker room in that first meeting in late July or mid-July back in your day and going, oh man, he is, he's going to get destroyed tomorrow and in the gassers or whatever the drills were. The the way it generally works is, you know, you have the gassers, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and so what happens is if they don't make the prescribed time is that they start out on basically IR and, you know, until, you know, and then you progressively make it, better not easier but you make it to where they make that time but you also schedule it at a time which is very inconvenient for the player i.e 6 a.m uh conditioning where oh, he doesn't want to get out of bed so you make him want to do it so you just better you and yes there are stories of guys coming in out of shape and but you know back in the oh gosh I would say 70s, 80s, and before that, I mean, guys had other jobs. So they would use that, and that's back when training camp was six weeks long, and that's right. where guys used that to get in shape. But now with the contracts that the guys are receiving, you know, these guys pretty much stay in shape all year, all year round, and they have their own trainers that are off campus, and they take advantage of that, and they're on these schedules. But you do have individual players that, you know, that enjoy the couch time, that enjoy binging on, you know, this, the streaming services. And <laughs> uh, they're like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that later. And it never gets done. But, you know, it's – but I've always said you are your business within a business. The NFL is a business. And you are your own separate corporation that isn't that you're the president you're the ceo you're the board of directors you're the marketing agent you are you're the frontline worker you are everything that you have to sell yourself to the front office personnel <coughs> and the coaches to make sure that you make that team because that's your livelihood so it's 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 in your best interest to come in and shape you recently were working under jim harbaugh at michigan did you know i remember the submarine bit he had for a little while uh, there was a lot going on uh he wanted everything quiet but how how rough and rugged how hard did these guys go right away i mean these guys are gonna be on the field in two weeks um yeah. you know now now you you don't want to get anybody hurt right right you don't want to get anybody hurt but there there's stuff written in the collective bargaining agreement and i don't know if it's the first two or three days that are helmets only to kind of acclimate and get everybody on the same page. And also, you know, just for the coaches and trainers to gauge how these players are doing as far as, you know, are they in shape or are they not? And then you, you know, 
you go into every training camp, basically every practice during training camp is just about set for the first two weeks. Those are set. And you'll massage those on a daily basis based on your needs, based on injuries, uh, and then based on what you think you need to work on. And that's where Dan comes into play with those nightly staff meetings that he's either more or morning staff meetings that he's having where those adjustments come into play. Radford Banto with us. You mentioned Dan Campbell. Why do you think he approaches this camp with this team? Maybe, maybe he doesn't do it any differently because what's happened the last two years, at least has really worked. What do you think the approach is uh, this time around? Is this team, some people feel is a Super Bowl contender. There's going to be a message that comes out. Um, you know, it's it's going to be portrayed to the team, possibly opening night or the first couple of opening night team meetings that's going to be portrayed to the team. And he's going to want it, to, if it hasn't already been given to them, uh, just like last year's grit, uh, there's going to be some phrase that they're going to try to use that Dan is going to stick to all year. And it's going to portray the personality of this team. Unfinished business. I've heard that one like 5,000 times, <laughs> but know. it's a new team. So that, yeah. you know, you, you have guys coming in that are, they, that came from different teams that they signed from free agency that, you know, unfinished business. What does that mean to them? You know, they have to adopt the personality of the team but this team itself is going to have its own individual personality as opposed to the 2023 team. And that is yet to, you know, it's already started forming via the draft, via OTAs, via mini camp. And now it's going to get cemented through training camp in the first probably four games of the season. Is it, I, I hate this question, but I'm going to ask you because you're my guy. Super Bowl or bust? Like, is that the, if they made the NFC championship game again, Brad, and like loss, would we all be like disappointing season? Why is that disappointing? I'm asking. <laughs> well, because the next, the progression has been last year, they made the NFC championship game. So now it's the next step is the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. No, the next step. And, yeah. Every year is different. You say the next step is the Super Bowl, which you're, which, which is something great to be focused on, but you concentrate on going one and O every week and just concentrate on the next game. That stuff, the Super Bowl, the playoff games will take care of itself during the season. If they have the mindset of going one and O every year, I mean, every week, then by the time you look up, it'll be the end of February. And hopefully we'll start seeing the confetti start to come down. Yeah. Which yeah. means you'll be holding up the trophy, but you can't pick your head up and you can't look past any team, much less the next play. This team, I was talking about this the other day on the show. I, I think this team could win less games, like 10, go 10 and seven. It's a tougher schedule, certainly. Um, yeah. And still maybe be a better team. Have you been on any teams like that where it's like, oh, we we went eight and eight, but that eight and eight team was better than a ten and six team I was on? Yeah, uh, shoot, I'll tell you. One case, in fact, was like when I was on the '95 Colts. I mean, we had our our lone star player. I mean, that's when Jim had his breakout year in '95. Yeah. Uh, but our lone star player was Marshall Falk. Right, and I would. Uh, Feel free to see if you can't mention any other players. Don't say me, because I was not. <laughs> uh, who was the kid that dropped the ball? Uh, Aaron Bailey? Was yeah. He on that team? Yeah. But was, was, that, the same, was that the same that? year of the Pittsburgh playoff game? That's 95. Yeah, that's when yeah. we made it to the AFC Championship game. Yeah. yeah. So Sorry I brought that up. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> He I thought he it. had it. I thought he had it. Oh my god! Believe me, from my angle, I thought he did too. Where were you? Were you on the field or were you on the sideline? <laughs> no, I was on the sidelines. I was on that the was, sidelines for that. That one. was the hill. Was... Yeah, the hill, Mary. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah they didn't yeah, put me in that one. Yeah, uh, Ken Dilger. Dilger was he on? Was he there? Yeah, 
That was his rookie year. I'm trying to think of any, but you're right. I'm I'm stumped. Yeah, that team <laughs> literally, besides Marshall, really. I mean, you know, yeah. We everybody knows Saragusa. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. let's see. I'm just trying to think of other guys like Trev Alberts was injured. He was on IR that that year. Uh, oh gosh, Sean Dawkins was that wide receiver. You know, Dilger, that was his rookie year. Um, let's see, Ray Buchanan was a defensive player. back. Yeah. yeah, no, he was a good player. Ashley Ambrose played for a while uh, in defensive backfield. Tony Bennett was a defensive end. I mean, we had we had solid players, but we were a team. And that's, yeah. you know, if, if you can get these guys to gel together as a team, then you have something. So, and that's going to be Dan's primary focus initially uh, getting this ball rolling and then keeping everybody healthy. Like you said, more with uh, Bradford Banta here as we talk a little training camp two weeks away right here on locked on lines. Brad Banta with us, of course, former lion. I right, tell me this, um, you know, training camp battles. I mean, I'm intrigued by the kicking thing. <laughs> yeah. Jake, no, Jake, so am I. Right, Jake Bates versus Michael Badgley. What do you think? And you and I have talked about this earlier in the summer, but all right, the kid gets signed, and obviously he got a two-year deal. They kept him away from Green Bay by giving him multiple years. Not that years matter that much in the NFL, but um, what do you think about a guy booming through sixty yarders in the, you know, in the UFL, and now now he's here? No, I mean because you're the way I always viewed it is you know UFL, NFL. You know, for a kicker, I mean, you're 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 essentially you're looking at the same thing. You're looking at the spot. It's just a different holder. Uh, how do they gel? How does the snapper holder kicker gel? Uh, you know, the holder does his job, the snapper does his job, and the kicker put it between the pipes. Uh, but no, that is one battle that is going to be intriguing for the camp. Uh, the kid definitely has the leg strength. He's proven that you know, with the UFL games, with the Michigan Panthers. Uh, you know, now it just boils down to consistency. You know, how is he, how is he from 49 and below? You got, you, you almost have to be a hundred percent and then extra point. So, you know, you almost have to be a hundred percent there. That is going to be a great battle coming through training camp. And then how does he do on kickoffs? Because with the new kickoff rule, I, I would say you're going to see a majority of these guys pull out their toolbox with a variety of kicks to get it to land between the 20 and the goal line. But it's all going to be three-step kicks. And, mm, you know, what, yeah. what, can, what, what can he do? Uh, because both he and Badgley, you know, both former soccer players, uh, I'm sure have a variety of kicks that they can use because hang time doesn't matter anymore on, on uh, kickoffs. It does not. It's all about ball placement. What other uh, ma uh, uh, battles, I guess, intrigue you for camp in a couple weeks? I tell you, uh, it's going to be interesting to me to see how the front four come together on the defensive line front because that's where they can make a majority of their headway. Uh, as far as getting pressure to the quarterback, just to get the attention diverted from Aiden onto somebody else to hopefully single one of those guys up because you have, you know, DJ reader in the middle uh, yeah. is going to be getting some push. Uh, but, and then I tell you who I think is flying under the radar, who I, I would say that a lot of people haven't talked about is, uh, Oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, the kid Matthew Betts, yes, Betts, the kid from the, the CFL, yeah, yeah, from the CFL. I mean, what? How is his game going to transfer over into the NFL? And then, and how is he? How is he going to transfer over into the NFL? Because you're talking about, I don't know how many years he's played in the CFL. Are you aware of that? Yeah, you know? a hand, just like a handful, like three or three or four, I think. Okay, yeah. so he has professional experience. Yeah, and he's going against you know, professional tackles. Is it the same grade of tackle that they have in the NFL? No, but how does his game adjust? And uh, I'm, he's one guy that 
that intrigues me uh, that's going to get in the rotation uh, as far as getting a pass rush and then hopefully easing some double teams that may come Aiden's way that hopefully we'll get either Aiden will get singled up and he'll have to take advantage of that situation or somebody else will get singled up to where they could put some pressure on the quarterback. That's good. I, I think that's going to be a good battle. Um, you know, I, the running back situation shored up the offensive line situation. I think you're going to see some shuffling there in the final, let's see, 10 that they keep. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, you know, as much as he is a crowd favorite, I'm not, I don't know if Skipper makes the final roster. I, 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 I really, I, I doubt it. I don't wow. know, yeah. but you know, is he good enough to get picked up by another team or does Detroit like having him in the bullpen on the practice squad? Right. Yeah. Cause they can bring him back, bring him back on the practice squad. So that'll be a good one. Um, and then here's another question I have for you concerning the season. Is Hooker going to see any quality time? Well, in the preseason? Or you mean, no, I mean, not in the preseason. I'm just talking regular season. You talk, yeah. What do you think? No, I mean, I wouldn't think so unless Goff gets hurt. I mean, this is Jared's thing. I mean, he's pleased. Yeah, no, he's I get He's been it. very healthy the last two years. He's going to be, to me, I, I'm guessing, Brad, that he's going to be Mr. August. I think he's going to play well in the in preseason or at least make some splash plays and the fans are going to go, oh, you know, and it's like, yeah. you know, you know, then that, that's how it's going to go. Yeah. And then regular season. No, he's not going to play. Yeah. I, unless, I, I, unless he has to. Okay. Here's a scenario. <laughs> I'll just throw out for you. You know, yeah. they, they storm and Norman through the schedule. All right. Clinch the division. Let's say they have a chance to rest the final two games of the season. Oh, I see. Yeah. Do you play? Well, you got to, you got to put, yeah, you got to put them in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What I, and you bring up a great point. Sudfeld versus Hooker isn't locked in yet. It's, that's no. not like, so like if Nate, who I thought was brutal last year in the preseason, maybe he's better this time around. Hooker looks like a rookie, looks like a guy that hasn't played in two years. And all of a sudden you're going, hmm. Who is the backup quarterback? I don't think that's decided yet. No, I don't think it's decided, but, you know, here's another one talking about, you know, putting bringing Skipper back on practice squad. At right. the same time, do you do the same thing with Nate? And yes, have him so. act as, you know, as a surrogate coach for Hooker. Yeah. And because it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's been done since the beginning of the league where you – you know, you bring in a more experienced quarterback that, you know, let's just say athletically doesn't have the skills that Hooker has, but he sees things and understands the game a lot better and can possibly pass on pass along that knowledge and at the same time stay employed. Yeah. Possibly. Right. And that's and right. that's and that's what you get with the expanded practice squad that right. they have now is that you're able to do this. And then let's say if you know the kicking situation, you know, is is say if Bates makes it, you know, do you right. keep Badgley on the practice squad? And you know, in in that case, you know, uh, is Bates looking over his shoulder every week, every day in practice? <laughs> yeah, every day in practice. I know. Yeah. yeah. So these these are all the scenarios that you that you just have to run through your mind, and as a coach. You have to think of these things. So whenever these situations come up, you're not caught flat footed. You know, you're in the ready position and you have an answer for it. Mr. Banta, always love talking to you, my brother. And uh, we'll yeah. do it again soon. Thanks again. Okay. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it, Matt. Here's Bradford Banta with us, the former Lion on a Wednesday edition of Lockdown Lions.